Hello everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. And I have a special guest today. Hello. This is my friend Marie. Hello. And she wrote this book about ABBA in 2013? Yes, in 2013. 2013. Some that's, years ago. Yes, yeah, that's what I thought. So unfortunately it's only available in Polish. She's been trying to find an American publisher and Hopefully at some point it will be published in English because it's a terrific book. So a couple of weeks ago, I asked for people to leave questions because we will be talking a little bit about ABBA and I will be asking your questions to Marie and she's gonna be answering as best she can. Thank you for questions. Anyway, I'll try to answer all. Okay, so Kate and Carol wants to know how did you get to work with them and how long have you worked with them and do you still stay in touch with any of them? Um, that's a good question. I met them in the 90s, a long time ago for the first time. I met them privately but also met some of them uh, for some interviews in uh, their um, Mona Music. It's a kind of place where they just work. I mean, Benny and Björn, they um, work on their music uh, to uh, some of their musicals and I met Anieta privately and um, I met other members of ABBA also privately so I could talk to them and just uh, exchange some points of views. Okay so Winnie wants to know and another person also wants to know um, what he specifically says, tell us about the new tour where they appear on stage as their younger selves. So we're talking about the Avatar tour. So can you talk a little bit more about okay. that? Personally, I haven't not seen yet um, the concert, but I saw some excerpts from the premiere of this Avatars concert. And when uh, the whole ABBA, all ABBA members attended. It was in the end of May this year and I saw some excerpts of these avatars and I read some um, very good reviews uh, of uh, fans and people who attended this concert. Also I read excellent reviews in media. So I must say that first of all you see on the stage um, avatars um, it's just uh, it, difficult to explain how it looks like because you see almost real young um, ABBA members and on the stage there is a real band uh, playing their music and they sang to their music so uh, it's just exceptional experience when you attend in this special built arena in London and you can see a real, like real concert and really people enjoy uh, being there and having fun and singing songs together with these avatars, which uh, is special because uh, during a certain time, uh, the real ABBA members uh, were filmed and their uh, figures and hands and, and moves were scanned and it just it just was made by uh, Lucas uh, production company so you can imagine how it can look like in in reality on the stage like you have been watched some kind of Star Wars films that's really cool that's I mean, interesting I, it is it's it's really really neat the little clips that I saw it just looks amazing and definitely makes you think what it must have been like to see them back in the yes, 70s okay so the next question is from my friend eva fuchsia floyd what is it about the band that drew your interest as a writer and researcher and she wants to know if you're a musician also <laughs> that's a good question because i started liking abba when i was a small girl and um my family connection with Sweden and living some kind of in uh, Stockholm and Sweden, um, it just forced me some kind of to like ABBA. And uh, I like them as members, I like their music. And um, 
they were amazing for me when I was a child and I was a fun leader um, and I also was interested in music generally in history of music in, uh, in the whole world not only ABBA but I think I have some kind of good knowledge about music history definitely and uh, if I'm a musician not and I work in media I've been working for such a long time in public relations and I work in media as a journalist nowadays and but I must say that I can play piano <laughs> so maybe I'm not maybe I'm not a musician but I like music I love music I should say and then play play this piano and play this instrument I love it much yes that's it's always good to know a little bit about how to play an instrument if you love music sure. so much yes I played the oboe so you can understand that was my you can understand the, the point of music and I also can read notes but what is interesting only Anieta the blonde one from ABBA could read notes really yes Oh, I never knew that. Yes. So wow, I the rest of you know they they compose music, not knowing notes. Wow. So it shows that's hard to how believe. Big genius. Yeah. Uh, was one of them. Yeah. Each of them. That's for sure. I never knew that. So yeah, you taught me something today. So Eva also wants to know. She says, I can't imagine trying to work with my partner after being divorced then multiply that by two for both couples do you have any insight into how that shaped or influenced the band and their work uh, definitely divorce is also a very hard thing especially when you are musicians and work together but i must say that abba were really professionals and after divorces they still work together it wasn't so bad as you could think because um, the first couple the blonde one Anieta and Bjorn her husband they just divorced, divorced uh, without any problem I mean uh, they decided that they love just you know some kind of flow away flown away how you, you yeah, can just... say that just kind of left or there was no special drama I mean no other issues and it was easy uh, to work as a couple uh, in ABBA and uh, the same thing happened um, to the other couple but when you have two couple divorced it's of course more difficult to work together besides they work together 10 years and I think that uh, ABBA members wanted to work more um, solo but I must say that after divorces um, they just met as friends the whole years and there was not a problem as some um, gossip papers wrote because one thing is for sure you never should remember what gossip papers write and they still could meet together they they still could could, they still um, could be friends so this is what happens nowadays also yeah it can happen so hopefully yeah. under the best circumstances you know you could at least like tolerate the other friends. person yes so Yoda wants to know more about the band and their history and musical influences uh, there are some, there are, I must say, you have many good questions. <laughs> uh, so I must say that ABBA was influenced by Beatles and they liked them very much. And what is more, uh, when ABBA was working, John Lennon said that, uh, that according to him, ABBA will be the best big uh, group after the Beatles. It was his opinion. And ABBA was also influenced by Beach Boys, so I some kind that. of American um, influence, I must say. I could see that because of the harmonies, definitely. So um, I must say that 
uh, but did not only play pop music, but if you listen carefully to their uh, albums, uh, you will listen Celtic music, rock music, uh, you, you also will listen to ethno music and some kind of Scottish or Scandinavian folk music, um, even some kind of reggae. So there are man, many, many kind of uh, different uh, type of music on their albums and in their songs. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. They definitely have um, not just one musical style, although their harmonies definitely are what I know them for. Yes, they had definitely, uh, I mean, especially girls, Anita and Frida, they had beautiful voices and uh, Abba was characterized by um, very professional and interesting arrangements and harmonies. So this is what is uh, very typical for this group. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so the next question is from Eli Schubert. And the question is, I'm very interested to know if Abba did special presentations with other singers. I saw one with Olivia Newton-John and Andy Gibb, but was wondering if they did more collabs with other singers or groups. I mean um, that they didn't make special recordings with uh, other groups on or vocalists on albums, but they um, performed together sometimes with uh, other artists or they made a speci special programs like this one with Olivia Newton-John and Andy Gibb in 1978. And I must say, because um, as we know already today that Olivia Newton-John uh, pass, has passed away. Uh, so she was a great singer and she was befriended with ABBA and she, especially mm -hmm. with Frida and ABBA liked uh, Olivia Newton-John and they, they had this special performance together in Olivia Newton-John special so I think that we can uh, today uh, pay a special homage to Olivia Newton-John, who was a special, especially uh, very popular, but very humble and very, very nice uh, person. Mm -hmm. I must say that when I was a small child, after some, uh, some years after releasing a Grease movie, uh, I sent a letter to Olivia Newton-John and uh, asking as a child for, <laughs> for a picture and autograph. And I was very, very completely surprised when one day I received her picture oh, with, wow. with inscription, How with cool. I mean, with her autograph. So yes, I will always forever mm. remember Olivia. Yeah, Olivia was really something. And um, what is more interesting, um, ABBA was performing uh, together on stage uh, in Germany in the same year, uh, 1978, with Carpenters. So uh, with Karen Carpenter, who was, as probably you, some of you know, that Karen Carpenter was a huge friend of Olivia Newton-John. So let's hope right. they souls met together. Yeah. And today's three years since my dad passed away, so hopefully they're all someplace better. Yeah. You know, but on the peace. other hand, talking about performance, I must say that in the beginning of our career, they just performed together on the stage with the Queen. So this is what I can say because ABBA. Um, um, well, if you maybe some of you remember, in 1979 there was special UNICEF concert in New York, and on the stage there were some musicians like ABBA, Olivia Newton-John, Bee Gees, Rita Coolidge, Donna Summer, uh, Rod Stewart, and some more which I, whom I don't remember today. So this is what I remember. That was really cool. Very, very cool. It's a, a good group that, that was there. We were just saying the other day too that we 
kind of forgot about Rita Coolidge until we heard one yes. of her songs on the radio. Yes. And she was really big back then. So it's it's something when you hear somebody who was really iconic from that era and they mm -hmm. pop up at another time. It's very interesting. Okay, so here is, speaking of interesting, another good question. Who designed your iconic outfits? <laughs> And I have to say, I've been to the ABBA Museum. We went together in 2015, I think it was, or 2014. Uh, some years ago, we were together in Stockholm in ABBA Museum. And we saw a lot of these costumes yes. in the museum, and it was just amazing. It was my, my personal favorite part of the museum because everything there was just so immediately recognizable. And you know that you've seen these outfits in videos or in pictures and to see them in person was just unbelievable so who designed them um there was one special designer of a sandstrom uh, who just designed them all these uh outfits and i must say that um, in some costumes uh, big help was offered uh, by frida who was just very interested in fashion and uh, she liked fashion, so sometimes you could see uh, her very original outfits, uh, haircuts. But definitely, if you ever come to Stockholm in Sweden, you should visit ABBA Museum, uh, where you will find um, ABBA costumes from uh, many years when they performing as a group. It's really cool. The whole museum is just incredibly it's interesting. A it's a yeah, it's a lot of fun. Definitely, definitely a must do. So, someone. So this is um, again Eli Schubert. Do you think that? Well, was Abba known in Sweden before winning Eurovision? Uh, sure, maybe. Well, let's start from the beginning shortly, because uh, you should know that ABBA was consist of members who were real musicians, because all of them, for example, Benny and Bjorn, they perform, they perform in out groups, and uh, Frida and Anieta, they were a famous Swedish vocalist. So when they met as a couple, Later, they thought that maybe they will um, may they will um, create a group, and uh, in they they began singing together in 1972. So they have they started to be known in Sweden, but definitely uh, their career, real career in the world, started after Eurovision Song Contest and they win. Yes. Um, the other question is, do you think that this virtual concert tour is going to start a trend? That this Avatar concert is going to start a, a new trend in concert styles? That's a very interesting question because um, many people, I mean experts, including me, we wonder what future brings, but I think that this avatars, we call it avatars from avatars, <laughs> uh, will create a new trend because it will be especially um, helpful for groups who cannot be perform or they don't exist anymore. Uh, for example, um, um, uh, not Keith Richard, Mick Jagger attended Avatar concert um, uh, last uh, in June. I mean, in June. Yeah. And he said that it will be very helpful for such groups like his group, but also uh, many other people attended, many famous vocalists wanted to see how it works so I suppose uh, they think about their future of course there are vocalists and groups who say that uh, it's not for them that the only music which is the most um, important is uh, is life and I must say that 
Yes, of course. Music played live on concerts always will be the best. But we have to remember that um, groups, our favorite groups, our vocalists will not perform forever. Life is not going forever, but uh, the next generations, they can see um, avatars uh, on stage and it just shows music. I wouldn't be surprised if the Stones did something like that, especially since Charlie Watts passed, just to be able to maybe recreate a young Rolling Stones band and maybe, you know, kind of put Charlie in there somewhere or, you know, maybe their classic concerts, but just I, to uh -huh. kind of maybe redo it in some way. But you doubt it? No, I think that it, think I think they, that they would do, do it. This yeah. is this is what uh, this is what Mick Jagger suggested that it will be helpful for them in the future. So I think uh, it's just um, yes, it just be helpful um, for for the history of music to show mm -hmm. to show in the future how uh, how they play how how it was in the past. Yeah. So. And I think that there have been a lot of musical concerts shown in the theaters, and I don't think that it takes away from the music at all. I think that it's just another way to experience the, the group and the music. I don't think, because I saw The Stones, the Martin Scorsese film yeah. in, in the theaters. I saw it on the IMAX, uh -huh. and it was just amazing. What I have to say about avatars, that it's definitely not the same as you saw in the past. For example, a playing musician at the piano and some kind of photo, a picture of a Frank Sinatra uh, from uh, on, in the lights. It's not the same because you can see in avatars you can see moves of real musicians. This is what was scanned. So only yeah. you have changed figures and faces in the young yeah. times. They used the real ABBA to do the avatar scans. So it's, it's they're gonna move like them and play there was like a, there them. Was a huge, there was a huge work because many many people was involved in creating avatars and the concerts yeah so it just took uh, weeks for ABBA men real ABBA members to get scanned and to perform in front of workers just to yeah. scan the moves yeah so i think uh, that it's just um, quite um, big fun to see the avatar concert yeah, I would like to see it one day. I definitely I'm going to visit London because uh, next three years this Avatar concert will be in London. But there are, the, there are um, some talks uh, with Las Vegas that Avatars will be shown in Las Vegas after this three years. So, well, we'll see. Yeah, that'll be a great show. I definitely would. I go see it in either place, actually, so that would be a lot of fun. I would go fun. with her to Las Vegas. Yeah, because you I have like, love gambling. <laughs> I, I, I like, yeah, I like, I like playing e casinos for fun. And what is more funny, I win. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Unlike me, who never wins anything. But <laughs> no, I did win. I won a little bit, but yeah, we go, we have fun, and you know, if you take away something, all the better. But yeah. So it'll be definitely fun to, to check that out in Vegas. Yes. It'll be an excuse to go. <laughs> so anything else that you want to add or, or you want to... What I want to add Say? is that um, because some some uh, someone um, asked me about cooperation um, of ABBA members with other musicians, I should add that um, ABBA members working solo uh, they cooperated on their solo album with other famous musicians. For example, Frida made an album with Phil Collins right. and Anita, the blonde one. 
um, she was cooperating with Jean from musician from Moody Blues, um, from Tan C.C. Eric Stewart, and um, with Peter Satura. And um, for example, I mean, Bjorn and Benny, they wrote the first musical they wrote with Tim Rice. So there are many famous names. That was Chess, right? Uh, chess. Yeah. There are many famous, um, famous um, names who, who who just make cooperation with uh, with other members, and I must say that um, there are some um, famous vocalists who just used their samples, like Madonna. Really, in what song? She just wrote a cover of the song like an angel passing for my room, but she used sample I know the one. to the very famous single, but um, the sample of Gimme Gimme song, but I don't remember the title now of the song of Madonna, but it's, it, it just was on the top of the, top of the I uh, think I know the one that you mean though. Yeah, that's yeah. for sure. It's, Interesting. It's yeah. Very interesting. And what I would would just uh, I would like to add is that I just would like to thank you for your questions. It's my pleasure to uh, to answer your questions. I just uh, send regards to all of you who watch this not only this video with me but each video with my friend. And I must tell you that I have known her for many, many years, and she's a very good, humble, nice person. Well, thank so you so much. Watch, watch her. Very sweet. Watch her <laughs> video. Tell them because, to subscribe. Yeah, subscribe her channel. I, I, I'm maybe, maybe in the future I will come back during my visit in the states, and I will relate about other interesting stuff as a journalist that would be good. yeah and uh, just uh, what should I say more how used to say more um. subscribe her channel <laughs> like her channel yeah like and the video just like her so well <laughs> have a good evening bye bye thank you thank you okay we're we're saying goodbye for now thank you all Hi. hit that like button subscribe and i will see you again soon we have some more luxury content but this was a luxury she has. i think she has so yes yes you know <laughs> all right guys i will see you soon bye bye bye